in again, in again, I just can't thank you enough because you've been so good to us. Yes, Lord, you gave us strength to walk through the doors. You gave us a mouth that we can praise you. You gave us eyes so that we can see, legs that we can walk. And I just want to thank you for being here tonight. For blessing our pastor tonight, all of the brothers and sisters that have came tonight to hear the word of God. I want you to bless each one of us, Lord God. Yes, let the Lord. word go forth yes, Lord. and let it come to me first. Yes, Lord. Examine our hearts, Lord. Yes. Right now, Lord God. Because they say that, are you ready tonight? Yes, Lord. yes, Lord God, we are ready to receive what you got Hallelujah. for us. We ask that you continue to give our pastor balm and strength. Continue yes, to bless his family. Yes, complete, continue to bless his ministry. Yes, continue Lord. to give him strength to go on in your name. Yes, Lord. No matter what the world do, yes, Lord. that you are glorified. In Christ's holy name we pray. Thank God. Thank God. And let the church say, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. God is good. You don't never have to say nothing, but you can wave your hand and say, God is good. Ask me how I know. He saved me one day. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He turned me around. Placed my feet on solid ground. And he gave me a mind to want to run on. I know that's right. Tell me he ain't a saving God. Praise the Lord. He's a saving God. He's a just God. He's an understanding God. He's a giving God. Praise the Lord. He's a healing God. And we thank him tonight. And again, we give an honor to our pastor Bowman. Thank you, sir. Your family. To our evangelist tonight. We thank God. My friend, I believe that's Reverend Capel, that, 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 God bless you, my friend. That's my friend now, y'all. Amen. Amen. Reverend Goodman and his wife, Amen. Pastor, your wife, Amen. my wife. Truly, it is a blessing to be here tonight. Yes, Lord. yes it is. God is good yes, all the time. All the time. God is good. I just want to reflect on something that I heard last night. We're going to get on to your word. I know you came to hear that. You didn't want to hear a whole lot of things about me personally, but I can't help from doing that because the word is to me first. Amen. That I have to be an example to what I preach, Amen. Amen. what I teach, Amen. what I talk, how I talk, and where I walk, and what I'm doing in my life in order to influence someone else that God is good. Lord, I hate I feel you, Lord. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I'm going. But I heard Ella Bowman, uh, Reverend Bowman, uh, he don't mind me calling him. Can I call you Ella? I'm not her stuff. Ella Bowman tonight. He said last night something that caught my attention. He said, that is that fireball preacher. And he pointed at me. And I said to myself, when I got to my house, I thought about that. I said, when I was born, and I got to be about six or seven years old, I was given a nickname. They said Cliff. Cliff is my daddy's name, first name. Mine's a James. When I got to be ninth grade, playing football, they called me Flea Foot because they say I was fast. When I got to be 10th grade, they called me rat because I got in a fight and I sneaked up and beat up a guy and they say I was sneaky. So in fourth, they called me a rat. When I got a little older in my adult age before I got married, oh well. <laughs> Amen. Amen. They gave me another nickname, which I won't say. All right. Before I got saved. Come on. The old man is dead.
So I said to myself, I said, Pastor Bowman, I said, I want to live up to that when you call me. Because I'd have forgot about the, all the rest of them. Amen. I want to put those things that are behind me Amen. and let them stay. Amen. Because if I go to digging them up, I get sad, I get sorry, and I get mad, and I got to wrestle with the devil on how to put them off. Amen. But God is good. Yes, Amen. Amen. And the Lord is going to bless yes, us right now yes, at this minute. Right Our now. subject for tonight, as our pastors already told us, are you ready? I say that with authority. And the reason why I say it that way because I often tell my wife when we're getting ready to go somewhere, are you ready? And she might say to me, well, I got to go in the restroom and I got to comb my hair. I said, honey, the time is clicking. I need to be there such and such time. And this lesson tonight say, are you ready? I keep saying that until we get in the car. Are you ready? So this is what we're talking about tonight. And now the scriptures say that I'm going to read two verses of Luke, and I'm going to stay with the theme, and I'm going to stay with this, the scripture, and I'm going to deviate, and I'm going to do a little precept on precept, concept right, upon concept, right, a little here, a little, a little there. there. <laughs> so don't let me lose you, and don't get confused. It'll all tie in before we leave here tonight. Amen. 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 Luke 1. Luke 10, 1 and 2. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also. And he sent them two and two before the face in every city and place. Well, he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, the hardiest truly is great. But the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the hardiest that he was sent for laborers into his hearts. Right. Say with me again, are you ready? Are you ready? Say with me, get ready. Get, ready. get, ready. get out of your way. Get out of way. Let God do it. Draw nigh to God. He'll draw nigh to you. James 4 and 8. That means, saints, we got a little work to do. I know we are working. We got to continue to work. Usually, the places where Jesus planned to visit, he sent his disciples to do his announcement of his good news. So now, if Jesus is sending you to a place, the harvest is plenty. If he's sending you to a place, or to see a person. Jesus is intended to be there. You say, yes, Lord. He's yes. already there waiting on ready, you ready. to get there. Are you ready? Are you ready? See, you can't be late when the Lord is talking to you. You got to go. Yes. Amen. Say that. Talking. Say that man. His work is going to get done regardless of whether you late that is true. or you don't show up. All right, now Are you ready? ready? Are you ready for the Lord? Are you ready to take his word out to everyone that you meet? Are you ready to witness? Do to do or however you decide to go unto the Lord, however he's leading you, just be you ready. Because he is there. We hear a great deal about praying the Lord of the harvest to send forth labels into his harvest. The Lord looked out upon the world, which is right for harvest. And our business today is to gather in the harvest. Say that now. Say that again. You got a job. I can't get in your way in the harvest. Because if I'm working for the Lord, he has given me my job. Say that. Say that. Now, when I get on your toe, that means I done got out of my job. Amen. If I got to push through. I'm in your, your, your corner. Yeah. So I got to leave 
live by what God and stay in my place, keep my eyes on the Lord and continue to pray. Amen. So as I sow tonight, if I sow this, this seed tonight, God will give the increase. Amen. And when he come back, he will himself receive his heart. Amen. Amen. So you know I can't get no credit, right? Amen. It's all about the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Period. The Lord. Got nothing to do with me. Now, I want you to just reflect your mind. We're talking about the harvest. We're talking about, I'm going to talk about that net right now. When, when I got up this morning, I went outside to cut my grass after I dropped my grandson off to football practice. And while I was cutting my grass, I growed a little garden in the backyard. It's grass there right now. But Brother Bubba, I saw a tomato out there red. It threw that grass. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go in there and pick it. And when I went in there, I picked several of tomatoes. Right now. Looked around, I found some cucumbers All in the right. grass. Oh, All right now. I kept searching and looking through the bushes and I found some string beans in there. All right then. So I plucked them and then I looked down the ground where I had planted a watermelon. There was two watermelons on the ground. One about this big and one about this big. And I pulled both of them off of that. Pulled both of them. Went in the house and cut one of them in half. And my wife tested it. It was little, but it was good. What am I saying? I received my harvest. My food. My God. That I had planted, but it was grassy. Yeah. It was all grown up. But I was able to go and distinguish between the watermelon and the grass. Yes. That's it. Amen. I know the yes. tomato from the grass. Yes, Lord. That was my harvest yes. Yes. that I planted. Yes. Yes. Now, God told us, now he said, now you cast that net out in that water. Mm -hmm. And when you drag that net in, that's a harvest in that net. Amen. Yeah, right now. Amen. Then he went over into that and talked about the pair about the tarot. Yeah. How he said, now you let all of that grow up together. Uh-huh. Come on. I'm going to have to separate. Yeah. Come on. In the end, I'm going to do it. This is saying yeah. you can't yeah. separate God's people. All right now. You can't do it. Because God called the things that we think are foolish, we call them wise. All right. <laughs> you don't understand how God works. So get out the way. Get out the way. And get ready. And let God do it. You got to work and keep on working and working on your own self in order for things to be able to get right. In the time. He gonna gather all up together, then he gonna bind what together? He gonna bind the tares together. Yes, Bundle it up. Yes, Lord. Yes, and Lord. sit it over there and burn it. Yes. Yes. You ain't got to worry about who ain't doing what. Come on. You can't worry about who's the seller and who ain't. Come God on. got to do that. That ain't your job. Amen. Amen. Your job is to sow the seed mm -hmm. and let God. Give the increase. Get out of the way. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Are you ready? Get out of the way. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, let God do it. And God will take care of it. Now, in Matthew the 28, 18 through the 20 verses say, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power, all power, is given unto me in heaven and earth. Yes, sir. Now, what I want you to do now, I want you to go ye and yes. teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe what that word, all, all things, thing. whatsoever I, I told command you. you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. 
Ain't that getting out the way? That's, yeah. That's listening to him when you follow his direction and go. You listen to him is when you're seeking his word and you're praying and you're fasting and you're testifying to others that he's the only true and living God. You're doing your job. Amen. Because the more you pray, the more you study, the better you're going to be in Christ. Amen. Amen. In Christ now. In this body of ours, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go through some changes. Yes, it is. But I better rather just live for him and suffer on this side to be able to glorify him Amen. on the other side. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We know that he is good. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, the call, and this is the part where he sends us out to evangelize. The call of evangelism is older than Jesus being on the earth. Goes out there to preach. Make disciples of all nations. Now, if in order to do that, it's something that you've got to have. Uh -huh. Well, you need it. Let me just say it like that. Uh -huh. If you want your job to be easier, you need all your tools. Yes, you, do. you don't want to go out there half-hearted mm -hmm. trying to figure out what to do, but you want to go out there and let the Lord would do. Amen. As you said, Acts 1 and 8 reads, But ye shall receive power, power. after that the Holy Ghost it's come upon you. Mm -hmm. And you shall be a witness unto me both in Jerusalem mm -hmm. and in Ju in all Judah and Samaria and, and unto the utmost part of the, of the earth. Of the earth. Now listen, if you want to do this thing good, seek for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Get you some power. Yes, sir. Get you some power. My grandson told me today, he said, Granddad, I threw that ball 46 yards today. When he first started going to football practice, he didn't even have a muscle, uh, Reverend Richard. You know, I thought he was like a little old flabby bone. And when he told me that, he did this. <laughs> Meaning that now he done got some power. Because he's lifting weights getting stronger, getting ready for the football season, yes. and the coaches are pushing them and running them, so they are getting power. power. But your power is coming from God. Amen. 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 That's where your power got to come from. Because you are messing around with a bunch of demons, yes. devils. People don't want to hear words you got to yes. say. Amen. So you're going to need something to be able to maneuver you a little bit. Give you a way out. Give you something to say when it's time to speak. Give you a time of something to say. Of have you to close your mouth. All right, man. All right. And say, Lord, I hear you. I'm listening to you. Leave. I'm trapped right now, but I'm listening to you. And when you be able to come up to a, be a witness to, for someone, you got to be strong. I know most of you all heard me testify on this before. I know you. I, I hope you. Don't get tired of hearing it, but it's for true. I was a young saint, young Christian, young saved man in my early 20s. Down at Marathon Eternal testified that God can do anything. Yes. And I was testifying to a brother and I told him, I said, brother, the Lord said in the word of God, if you spike me on one cheek, brother Richard, that's what I told him. He said, turn the hood. Huh? You need some power. Yep. You need some power. Because that brother slapped me. Holy! Yeah, you need him. You need him because old brother flesh is something else. He, he, he don't want to take you to criticize. He don't even want you to lie on him. The flesh don't want you to talk about him. And he don't even want you to look at him wrong. Mm -hmm. Don't want you to wear the same clothes that he's wearing. Don't even want you to speak to him. So you're going to need some power. But let me tell you the good story of the ending of the story. I asked him, I said, brother, why did you do that? Now, I know you can guess what he told me. I want to see if you living what you talk. You better say it. You're going to need some power. Because the devil is like a roaring lion. Walking around seeking whom he made about. He wanted to turn you around. 
He want to turn you around. He want to change your mind. He don't want you to believe that I'm all power. That through God can do anything. He don't want you to believe that. He wants you to believe a lie every day of our life. Now check this. Listen at this right here. Deep inside of every one of us that follow Christ, it desire, we desire to see others saved and to have a visible, common, lasting impact. We want to be somebody, y'all. Whether you want to say it or not, we might say, all right, I don't want no money. I'm all right what I got. I don't care if they don't never call my name in church. Well, I have hardly to believe it. Because everybody want to be recognized. Everybody want to be respected. That's true. That's right. This desire was born in us. When we believed the gospel and we tasted the power of the salvation that everyone believed in Romans 1 and 16, not only wants to see the power work at work in our life, but we want to see it working through and being, yes. bringing life and hope of Jesus to a broken world. We say it all the time, if, if everybody would like me, boy, this would be a better world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I had everybody saved like me, I wouldn't have no trouble at all. all right. We all get along. We would never have to worry about watching our back. Unlocking our door. Amen. We would never have to have to worry about what's going on yes, yes. on the outside of who out there to shoot us. Come on. This is not our ideal though. It comes from God. Amen. John 15, John announced that he chose, Christ chose and appointed us to bear his word. Yeah. To carry his word, a word over this world. Amen. To preach and to teach others about him. Amen. Listen to me. Open up your spiritual ears. All right. There are people in this room. Say that again. There are somebody in this room. There is someone in this room. Where if you die, you would be translated into a heavenly place. Grace. Oh, man. Because of grace, you are saved. Thank you. And we Thank all you. teach and we teach and teach that when you die, you go into a good little place and you're going to be with Christ yes, Lord. forevermore. Amen. But now on the other hand, right there are some of you that's in this room or there's someone in this room that if you die, remember, you cannot fool God. Amen. Come on, Adam. Amen. Say that. You will be sent to a judgment. Mm -hmm. Say that. Because you have not accepted Christ in your life. Say it again. Jesus. That's the word. Amen. So, Luke 16 and 24 reads, And he cried and said, just a proof that there's a burning place. He cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Right. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in the water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. So that lets you know that there's a place that you don't want to go. Amen. You do not want to entertain that. So those of us who are preachers, we got five in here tonight. Six. Oh, I see. Oh, is that who I see? Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Uh, but those of you who are preachers of the gospel, we are not here to entertain. Amen. Say that. Not that we are significant of ourselves to think that anything as of ourselves, but our significance is God. Amen. who also had made us able minister of the New Testament. 2 Corinthians 3, 5 through 6. In case you're keeping notes, you want to read it when you get home. Amen. We are not here to talk about, about your temporal things. 
how you can get the best of things out of your life. I'm not concerned about your self-esteem. I'm not concerned about your billfold and your checkbook. You're balancing them out. But I am concerned. One thing. Say one thing. I am concerned that one thing, one day, each and every one of us will stand naked before God. Amen. Of the holy and be judged. That is my greatest concern tonight. Listen to sisters and brothers. This is not a game. Amen. This is not something that you have to, have to do with culture. This has to do with the word of the living God. Right. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Life and death, heaven and hell. Amen. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Amen. And some of you will hear warnings after warning. Right. After warning. Yeah. After warning. And you will still not listen. Jesus. And you will die. And you will spend your life eternally in hell. Right. For the word of God is quick. And it's powerful. Mm -hmm. And it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even the dividers of under of soul and spirit. And the joints, the marrow and his discerner through an intent of the heart. Mm -hmm. Hebrew, the fourth chapter, and the twelfth verse. Mm -hmm. Now, young people, mm -hmm. young people, mm -hmm. where my baby at? He over there. Young people, <laughs> look like he, he taking a nap. <laughs> Hear me. You cannot live like the world. Amen. Monday, through Friday, or should I say Monday through Saturday, and come to church on Sunday <laughs> and be a saint. Amen. You may think because your parents are saved and you are saved. This is not true. Amen. So young people, how would you know that you are a child of God? How do you know that you are truly Christ-like? How do you know if you die right now that you will go to heaven and be accepted by God Almighty. Well, all right. Now, that you will go to heaven and accept the Almighty God. The greatest evidence, the greatest evidence is that truly believe in Christ that God has begun a good work in you. Evidence, action. Speaks louder than the word. If you're a saint, you're going to act like a saint. All right. If you're Christ like, you're going to act Christ like. Amen. If you cross the fence halfway, you're going to act cross the fence and halfway. You're going to be good today and bad tomorrow. Yes, indeed. You're going to be nice in front of me and cussing him out behind his back. Yep, Lord. Cannot be that way. Amen. It's got to be a change in your life. God got to do a work in your life. And he can do a work in your life. Psalm 119 and 9 say, Wherewith shall a young man clean his way? And by taking heed unto according to thy word. We are working on us, saints. We want to clean our way, Amen. clean our thoughts, yeah. do the thing that's pleasing in God's yeah. eyesight. Now, many of you that are older, mm -hmm. older, right you know that you know what it's like to follow Christ. Amen. You know what it's like to pay dearly for your faith. You know what it's like to suffer. Yes, you know what? You rather die than to deny Christ. That's Amen. that's what we say. Amen. I won't take it back. Amen. I won't take it back. Amen. That's what my wife said. Amen. We were sitting in a den, getting ready to get married. And as we sat there, the pastor was 
counseling us. I hadn't yet got saved. All right. Yeah. Now. All right. And the pastor said to me, he said, son, said, it's not that we will not, that you can't get married. It's that we won't do it. So he looked over there at my wife and he said, Sister, what you think? She said, whatever you say, Pastor. <laughs> and I said immediately, what must I do to be saved? Say that. All right, now. There you go. Got to be a change in your life. Period. 43 years ago. All right, now. You got to be ashamed. You got to be willing to give up Amen. to follow Christ. Amen. If you don't, you're going to lose out. Amen. And he is going to leave you where you're standing. Mm -hmm. Since Christ ascended, we who are followers have been active in spreading the gospel yeah. through evangelism. Reaching the lost is the main duties of a Christian. It has been estimated that in the first century, 200 years, first 200 years, the 120 started out way back in the day for that 200 years, it added up into me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, from my understanding, it's not even two-thirds Christians in the, in the whole world. Say it, Doc. Let them know that. Oh, Jesus. So we really, really are outnumbered, and the harvest is plenty. Yeah. 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 All of that good old white cotton is out there ready to be picked. <laughs> John 4, 34, and I'm, I'm getting on out of here now. John 4, 34 and 32, 38 said, Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me. Amen. And to finish his work. Say not ye that I, that are ye four months, then come the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the field. For they are white and all ready to harvest. And he that reaps receive wages. You're going to get paid. Yes, sir. You're going to get paid for your work. Yes, sir. You're going to get a chance to have eternal life. Yes, Lord. That's what we're looking for. And gather fruits unto life eternal that both he that sow, that's me, and he that reap yes. may rejoice. Yes. And herein is that saying true, one sow, one and another reap. I sent you to reap that, that whereon he bestowed no labor. Other men labor, and ye are entered into their labor. We all in this together. Amen. Every one of us in together. Now Hebrew 12 and 1 say, <laughs> Wherefore sin, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness. Let us lay aside every way, every sin, which do so easily beseed us. And let us run patient the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, for the joy of that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God, Hebrew 12 and 1. So, saints, we got to keep working on us. Amen. Amen. Take it personal. Amen. Take it personal. Sing that one song, say, I'm saved for that glory divine. I'm saved because Christ is mine. My life is complete and my joy is fulfilled. I'm saved, saved, saved. Then he go on and say that. I don't have to sin no more. You can believe it as you want to. I don't have to sin no more. Tell it like this. Because Christ is mine. My life is complete and I'm saved. Say, say. Did he say that? I don't have to lie no more. Oh, no, you don't. You might say, oh, you can't help it. But with God, you can. oh, God, oh, A-L-A.
all things are possible. If you believe the words, you got to believe that you don't have to sin no more. You got to believe the word. No more. God bless you. Amen. Since we are surrounded, and I'm, I'm, I'm quitting now, because I said I was quitting a while ago, but since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witness, let us throw off everything that hinder. Anybody know anything you got hindered? Don't say it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Anybody know anything about hinders? Amen. Do anybody have any hinders? Don't say it. Amen. Keep it to you. That's right. Tell God about Tell it. Tell God about it. Tell God about it. Mm, yes. Don't use the word that I can't help it. I can't quit. Say that. That's just James Cruther's ways. That's the way he just act. Amen. Now, 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 now. Now, Henry, pray and give God. Give it to God. Say that. Now, this was written to encourage and challenge the saint of God that believe to persevere and their faith, especially in the midst of trial and tribulation. Amen. God knows we got trial. Mm -hmm. We got tribulation. Mm -hmm. But keep singing that song that I'm, I'm saved say. by his glory divine. divine. We're standing all over the building. Saved by his glory.